And do you know something else, Jack? She's got a way of looking, and it's me mother to the life. If I caught that look, I'd be quaking in my boots. Yeah, it must be very nice, I guess. Oh, I'm not saying it was all hearts and flowers, because it wasn't, no, no. I mean, fair dues. 20 years is a long time. It takes a bit of getting used to, doesn't it? I think she's still in a state of shock, you know. Well, I am myself. I suppose I sound daft. But, but you know what I mean, though, don't you, Jack? You know, when you know you've got that bond with someone. Well, there are a few things that you, even I would understand, Alink. I mean, you've just found your long-lost daughter after 20-odd years. You're bound to feel chuffed. You both are. I can't get used to it. I can't. OK, we don't mind, Alink, but I'd like to get on with yeah. this. Bit of work, you know. What's she like? Now, I know they've got a big house and her husband's rolling in it, but what's she like? I didn't really see enough of her. Oh, come on. I'm telling you. Well, you were there, weren't you? Oh, I was there. Alec was there. The husband was there. Only the daughter didn't put in much of an appearance. She doesn't want to know him, love. I knew that the minute I walked through that door. Oh, you couldn't know that. I mean, come on. Anybody could, apart from... And I think he's deliberately trying to kid himself. Oh, that's sad. Well, it might be sad. But it comes as no great surprise to me. But he's her dad. No. He's a father. That's a different thing. They can manage that without even knowing. Dad's the fella you find knocking about the house. When his missus walked out on him, it was two weeks before he got home and found the note. He wasn't even a frequent visitor. He's told me. You can't suddenly pay all your back dues. It can't be done. But you try taking Jamie away from Eddie. He'd fight anybody. He'd do anything for that kid. Well, he'll not end up in the same boat then, will he? Don't let on I've set out, will you? I won't. You're a pessimist. You know that, don't you? Yeah, well, we bankrupts do tend to take a gloomy view. You are not bankrupt. You seem to be forgetting that you've got a perfectly good business here. Well, at least you have, as long as we can get a paper out. Good to hear the we. And she wasn't hostile to the paper, she was totally indifferent, no interest. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I do try not to talk about Deirdre. Well, I think you never have to from time to time. Let's not be too sensitive about it. You are so different. Pay attention. You're not bankrupt. There's enough money here to pay the printers, the rent, the distributors, and if you can collect what you owe, ah. you wouldn't be stinking rich, but you'd be stinking solvent. Perhaps, perhaps. But then, when I have rendered unto Deirdre that which is Deirdre's... You don't have to lie back and give Deirdre anything she happens to ask for. Well, it's not just a question of paying what she can screw out of me. I want it to be honest, honourable, adequate, and final. Well, don't be too noble. Remember, if half of everything's hers, the other half's yours. You've got rights as well. That's Tracy. I know. And considering she's not really your daughter... Oh, yes, she is. I adopted her. I brought her up. No question. Do the right thing by everybody, but include Ken. You don't have to strip yourself naked. It's a settlement, not a penance. Well, don't you see it like that? Don't fancy me in sackcloth and ashes. Well, I probably would. Unless we've completely failed to understand each other. I don't think we've done that. You're breaking a bad habit. Not a perfect marriage. Else I wouldn't be here. I wish you'd been here ten years ago. All right, going riding is one thing, but it's a different thing altogether when you've got your own horse, you know. And, I mean, it's not a, it's not a donkey I'm talking about, this, this Saracen. That's his name, like, you know. It's an horse. Up here it is. Really? Oh, aye. Plenty of daylight under him, you know, big in the quarters. You know, real jumper. Oh, you know a lot about horses then, do you? Should do is pay the bookies enough for his education. <laughs> yes, well, I'm telling you, this, uh, this Saracen won't look out, out of place with a jockey on his back. Never mind my granddaughter. <coughs> Granddaughter, eh? What a turn up, eh? Sounds like they're doing all right to me. Well, well, I don't mind admitting, Mike, I was a bit worried there, I was. Because I wasn't sure whether Sandra and Bet would, uh, how can I put it, would gel socially. Socially, I'm talking about. I mean, myself, I mean, I can mix with anybody. But not everybody's the same, eh? No, I might just deck him. Hey, I see my laddos in. Don't just curl up with him the whole of dinner time. I pay you to serve everybody. Name it, name your pleasure, anything, and it is yours.
Party of Ridley's with plenty of froth on. And I thought you were adventurous. I might as well talk to it. What? <laughs> Is, uh, is that all you can manage? Ah, uh, yes, I'm afraid it is. Well, I mean, you don't want to starve yourself, you know. I mean, I did that. I went down to seven stone three. I was beginning to lose my sense of balance, you know, malnutrition. So I'll tell you what, I'll leave it there and then see what you can do. Alma, mm. the reason I'm not eating it is because it's cold. And it wasn't very good when it was warm, and I don't think it was ever hot. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I spoke recently. Uh, at least you're not hovering about, hushing and shushing like I've got some sort of unmentionable disease. I suppose I should be glad. Oh, listen, well, I know what you must be going through, Paul. Oh, don't worry about me. I've been through it all before. Dab and me. You're not the last people I would ever have expected. I mean, I think that goes for everyone else. Uh, not quite everyone, love, but never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, I'm with you. Um... Was it, was it really cold? Because, I mean, I could get you something else. Don't worry, just fetch us another cup. Right, now, what was the panic? Need more chips from the back. And it's just possible she doesn't want to discuss the state of a marriage with all and sundry listening. Well, I mean, she knows everybody else is going to talk about it. I mean, she might as well be included. Not everybody. Not me, for a start. I know what it feels like. It's what I mean, even Mike's talking about it. I mean, you know him. You can't buy it, sell it, account it. I mean, he was costly. I mean, he said he couldn't think why she hadn't kicked him out years ago, and that was the polite version. No love lost between him and Ken. Ah, oh, yes, well, that was over the daughter, wasn't it? Otherwise, I thought he might have fancied her. <laughs> it's worse than waiting for your pension, is this? It's the no service round here. Mind you, it was much better when you had staff that took an interest. And I'd just like to take this opportunity, Tim, of thanking you for your hospitality yesterday. Uh, I can say that on behalf of myself and the better half, really and truly. No, 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 we did. We did. Uh, oh. Oh, well, yes, sir. Yes, I would if she's there. there. It's all right saying, hang on. House that size, you could be gone all afternoon looking for her. Is it a big house to live in? Yeah. <laughs> Funny, I'd never have guessed. Where exactly is it to live, eh? Buckingham Palace. Is he still laying it on? Oh, he's on the phone. Of course, he's got to hang on because if she's in the garden, you see, they'll have to get the helicopter out to fetch her. Oh, he's, uh, he's just gone to fetch her. Sh sh shall I, uh, shall I give her your regards? Why not? Yeah. Oh. Hello, Sam. Oh, Tim. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. Oh, I, 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 she's always got something on. <laughs> yes, she is. She is. Yes. Look, look. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll, I'll give her a call later on. Or, or better still. Uh, Give us a, you know, I think she's got the number, but just in case she's mislaid it, it's 714 uh, 2251. Right, thank you. Weren't she there? Oh, seems she's just slipped out. Again? Uh, she's always got some atonic, can't keep track of her, he says. <laughs> and you think they lead idle lives, eh? Yeah. Always up to somebody. Uh, yes, love. It's gone right out of the window, hasn't it? What it? Christmas, proper Christmas, what it ought to be, eh? Well, yeah. I mean, what it ought to be by rights, eh? Yeah, of course, not everybody's religious. Well, well, no. Ah, oh, I mean, it's all come down to one thing now, hasn't it? Money, money, money. Yeah, that's the new religion now, of course, money. It certainly is. Yeah, I mean, peace on earth. It's like a battleground, this city, come Christmas. <laughs> and as for goodwill toward men, God. I know that little sod. Hey! Recorder? 
No, I'm sorry, he isn't. I don't know where he is. Probably following up a story. I'm trying to get hold of him most of the afternoon. I'll get him to call you first thing. Yep. Bye now. I'm sorry, Ken isn't here. I know that. I wouldn't be here if he was. Well, I'm sure there's a lot we could talk about, but whether it would be advisable... I have very little to say to you. Except, would you mind stepping aside? There's nobody here. I was just shutting up. To all intents and purposes, I own half this newspaper, for what it's worth. So you don't mind. Don't worry. I've not come to burn the place down. Wouldn't be very wise, considering, Don't would you it? tell me what's wise and what isn't. Just draw his attention to these, will you? They're bills. You could have posted them. And ask him if he wants the rest of his clothes, otherwise they go to Oxfam. You could have told him that on the phone. You knew he wasn't here. So I shall assume that you knew that I was, and you've come to see me. Well, I've never really had a close look at you, have I? Funny. I'd not have said you were his type. Is this really going to do either of us any good? Mind you, I suppose it's like with everything else. As they get older, they go more for comfort than looks. He's made his choice, whatever his reasons. You must know you didn't make him happy. There comes a time when he's entitled, when anybody's entitled to ask for a bit more. And you're the particular bit that everyone's entitled to, are you? Well, if it makes you happy, you're welcome. What do you want me to do? Scream, shout, cry, what? I'll tell you what you can do. You can remember that my house is mortgaged and the money went into this paper and half of that money is mine. Well, then, the better success he makes of this newspaper, the better your prospects. So why make life more difficult than it has to be? He's working all the hours God sends as it is. Oh, and you're working with him, are you? I'm doing what I can, which happens to be quite a lot. Well, if you're stopping round the office, I think you're very wise. Make sure he gets these, will you? He used to tell me he was working every hour God sends. Turns out most of the time he was in bed with another woman. Remember that and all. Yeah, disappeared into them flats. What are they called? Uh, Briley Gardens. Yeah, it was him, all right. Well, you can't be sure, Don. And you've got to be, haven't you, before you go running after people and thumping them. I never said I was going to thump him. Oh, well, what were you thinking of doing, then? Mm, grabbing him by the scruff of the neck for a start. Don, you don't know it was him. Yeah, I knew. Me knew and all. Yes. That's why did he leg it. Well, you can't just go running after people and collaring anybody. <sighs> of course you can. Citizen's arrest. Haul him down to the cop shop. Why don't you just let the police get on with it, Eddon? Because all they want to do is accuse me. They want it all nice and easy. Well, if I'd had half a yard on that kid, I'd have made it easy for him. Yes, and you could have got a knife stuck in you and all. Oh, come on, I'll look after myself. I had a son who could look after himself. Hey, now, come on, come on. It's not going to come to that, is it? Don, don't be chasing after trouble, love, please. Don't do it, promise me. Come on, Alf, you ought to know. What happens to middle-aged men? What makes them flip? I'll tell you when I get there. Ken Barlow. I know. I mean, of all the married men, I would have thought he were a dead serf with a silver wedding state. And, I mean, it's not as if it's the younger woman, is it? She's not exactly a bit of crumpet. Well, he's got that about him. He can pull a bit of crumpet. Get back under your stone, you. I'm trying to get down to the psychology of it. Anyway, he's got more about him than some. Yeah, but I can see what she sees in him. It's what's in it the other way round. That's the mystery. Because when you balance the books, I can't see it. Well, there's no mystery, is there? I mean, he's, he's being led on. You see, a man isn't responsible when he's being led on. It, it's like him being drunk. And any man can be led on if a, if a woman's got no shame. No, I think there's more to it than that. I think it's panic. It's letting your emotions run away with you. And then that's a good way of running away from everything, including getting old. Mind you, when you think back to when you were young, it's worth running back to, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think you were ever young. Oh, 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 oh. you were so... I like country and western, I think. Yeah, well, there's this mate of mine who plays in a band. We've got this gig tomorrow, if you fancy it. Where? Some pub in Ashton Underline. Oh, at the top, then, have they? Hey, hey, they're supposed to be famous for it. Nashville Underline, they call it. <laughs> Any road, do you fancy it? Yeah, but I'll have to swap shifts, so I better look as I'm working. <laughs> You've not got nearly enough about you, love. So start growing all gracefuller. There you are, love. That'll keep the winter out of your bones. 
Well, it's not Hamforth, no, but you'd not be ashamed to entertain anybody here, would you? Yes, I would. So don't even think about it. Oh, come on, love. I mean, if it's only on the grounds of politeness. I mean, we've enjoyed their hospitality. It's up to us. The ball's in our court now. Alec, I don't really think they're expecting an invitation off us. Don't bother your head. Well, I think that's the least they'll expect. I mean, even, even if we were casual acquaintances. Look, but we can invite them for supper, eh? Now, uh, when would suit you? I'm easy myself. It's, it's any time to suit them, really. Alec, you may as well know. There's no time that would suit them. They don't want to come round here. Bet. Look, you don't have to like them. But please, please don't be hostile. I'm not being hostile. Well, I think you are. I mean, you you think they're snooty because they've got money and their daughter goes horse riding and so on, but they're not snobs, these people. Look, I can understand how you feel. They but... can ride all the horses they want. I don't give tuppence. But they don't want to know you, love. Look, I don't know how you can say that. I mean, Tim went out of his way, didn't he? Because he was being polite. He's a polite sort of fella. But your Sandra don't want to come round here. Be told, love, please. What you mean is you don't want her to come round here. Alec, think back. It was half an hour before she stuck her nose in. And you know why she did? Because her husband told her she'd flame him well had to. Because it was embarrassing him. Is that how you see it? Doesn't strike you, does it? Not that she was nervous. A bit strung up seeing her dad after all these years. Every time you ring her, she's out and she doesn't ring back. It's been 20 years since you've seen her. And as far as she's concerned, it can be another 20. Maybe if you'd come on like this a bit sooner. If you'd been there the day she got wed. But you weren't. Nothing in the world can make up for that. Or all the rest. And if you'll be really honest with yourself, it's not life or death to you either. Not after 20 years. So why do you think I've been looking for her? It's only since you went to Frankie Watts' funeral and you came back feeling old and sorry for yourself. I just, I just, I just don't know where you get all this from. I really don't. Well, then I'll tell you. I get it from standing on the landing outside their bedroom door when I went up to powder my nose. Oh, listening at Keogh's, eh? Yeah, well, you know what they say about that. And he was giving her a good talking to about putting in an appearance. And before you go storing up more grief for yourself, you may as well know. What she said was short and simple. That's how I know. You're making all this up. Why should I make it all up, for God's sake? Why? Because I think you were prejudiced against her before you even met her. I don't know, maybe... Maybe you're jealous because she's got some claim on my affections. No. I didn't want you to be hurt. I didn't even want to tell you. But if you don't believe me, fair enough. Invite him. You'll see for yourself. I nearly sent out search parties. Oh, business, business. I'll tell you all about it. Just let me rest my weary head. Been a long day. Have you eaten? I don't seem to remember any eating going on. Get in the bath and I'll bring you a drink. Then I'll see what we've got in the fridge. That's what I like about you. What? Well, I've lived so long and you're the first woman who's offered me a drink in the bath. I don't want to know what the others did or didn't do for you in the bath. Why not? The answer's nothing. Well, oh, she came to the office. Oh, what does she want? Well, I think she half wanted a slanging match with me. She knew you weren't there. But when it came to it, she just made a few remarks and then left. What kind of remarks? Well, it really doesn't matter. Offensive? Not very charming, but they really don't matter. Upset you? Oh, come on, Ken. Not under any illusion about being her favourite person. No. She made various pound of flesh noises. I mean, the sooner you get a solicitor to get your end sorted out, the better, you know. One of the things she said was, I own half this newspaper, and that was before she was in the door. Did you? You're going to have to get it sorted. That newspaper's important to you, Ken. 
The fact that there's a, a mortgage on the house to fund it is just an ordinary business problem, not a marital one. However you do it, pay it off. Please, don't go through all that again, my It's love. got to be gone through. No, not anymore. She doesn't own the paper, not even half of it. And neither do I. Well, who does then? Gazette Group Newspapers, PLC. They made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. You mean they made you an offer you didn't refuse? Well, I accepted anyway. Ken! I had to. It's the only way I could be absolutely free and clear. I've got obligations to be discharged. That's what you want, surely. But Ken! You don't want me trailing clouds of mess and maintenance. Ken, I don't want to be the woman you gave everything up for. That's a hell of an obligation too, you know. That paper was important to you. Now what is there? Everything. Everything that isn't just filling in time. Everything that isn't just getting the bills paid. Everything that isn't just a bad habit. Honestly, what's left is everything. Hello, love. It's Harvey Brennan, Don's wife. Yeah, how are you? Listen, can you do me a favour? Yeah? Can you call him up on radio and ask him if he's passing an all-night cafe to get me a pint of milk? Tell him he'll not get any cocoa if he doesn't. What do you mean? Oh, isn't he? No, it's uh, just I thought he said he... No, don't bother. I'm not honest. Don't bother. He's probably on to a dog track or something. Yeah. All right, love. Bye. And you can catch up with all the Coronation Street action in the Omnibus editions on Sunday afternoon. Up next today, Emmerdale.